I want to apologize in advance because I wore black. I have a black backdrop, but I was too lazy to change outfits. Just finished watching uh, El Salvador, USA. It's late. Wanted to get this out for all of you. And uh, recapping the final game, the June window has closed. Four games and an un unbeaten run for the United States. Two wins, two ties, one goal allowed, and it happened against El Salvador. Before we get into all of that, uh, so much, if I got one more weather update about San Salvador, I was going to break my laptop. I mean, people were talking about like, you know, Katrina was going through San Salvador. I mean, it's rain. The field was bad. But did you notice something? That ball never stopped. When the, it's being passed around, it was a playable game. And... I saw the excuses and I saw a lot of people tweeting about it saying, oh, this is unacceptable. No, it's acceptable. It is finding a way to get out of your comfort zone. You know, you need some, you need some stuff thrown your way because it's going to happen in tricky spots. And guess what? The United States found a way out of a very complicated situation. They found a way out of adversity and uh, just no more, please, no more weather updates. This wasn't that bad. Honduras, Canada was bad. But I've seen so much worse where the ball can't even move. This did not, uh, it did not interfere with the U.S.'s passing. In fact, they found ways to be more effective. That's good. That's exactly what you want from this team. You want to put them in a spot where they're not at home. They don't have all the creature comforts. And they found a way back. And that's why I'm putting this El Salvador game down as a victory. Because they should have had a penalty on uh, the handball right before the Paul Ariola red card. I'm putting that as a victory. I tell, I was really impressed. This was the most important of the four games in this June window because it was going to be the most complicated. And the weather did help, uh, help it. But people saying, pull out your starters. Do no. This is perfect. Don't want anyone to get injured. Listen. My favorite memories growing up is playing in conditions like that. I don't remember a ton of injuries. I, you know where I got injured? When you're going full flight on a clean field and someone comes and tackles you and you go... Bing, 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 bing. Nobody was going... Vroom. And then when you fall, you slide. Please show me the data you get injuries. Now, I do understand when you pivot in that, it could be bad. But there were no injuries. So glad there wasn't because if there was an injury, it's not because of these conditions. And it's got to be better from El Salvador. I understand that. But it, was, it may have been an injury because of something which could happen anywhere. All right. So here on the Soccer OG, <laughs> a reminder to check out the Soccer OG podcast. I have one up there with Marcelo Balboa. And take a listen. We were right about a lot of things heading into this game. Coming up uh, Monday, I'll be with Doug McIntyre, who follows the U.S. men's team. We'll put a, a close to these very, very thought-provoking Soccer OG podcasts during this June window. And like and subscribe here. I'll keep this brief. I know I've said that before, so it won't be brief. Let's go through the starting 11, a strong 11 for the U.S. And people were surprised. Why are you playing? Let me explain something to you. I'll hold off on the starting 11. We're in a World Cup year. Do you remember when we were like, oh, no, don't do that was, no, World Cup, this is a World Cup year. You play this game like it's a World Cup game. And Greg Berhalter did that. And we're better off because of it. And those guys are going to sleep well tonight because they, they figured something out. Nate Bucati, who, who covers Sporting Kansas City, had a tweet where he said, I love the fight on this team. We didn't see that in Kuva. You're right. And granted, these are not the same kind of games. But they figured it out. Like the dinosaurs at Jurassic Park. They found a way. This is the starting 11. Ethan Horvath in goal. Mm -hmm. Jedi Robinson, Aaron Long, Cameron Carter-Vickers. Second time we saw that center back partnership. They were very good. Reggie Cannon right back. Eunice Musa, Tyler Adams, Brendan Aronson in the midfield. Christian Pulisic, Haji Wright, Tim Weah up front. And um, at the half, Jesus Ferreira and Weston McKenney came in for Haji Wright and Brendan Aronson. 70th minute, Paul Ariola came in. 
And then 80th minute, uh, Luca De La Torre and Jordan Morris, who would combine on the uh, tying goal, came in for Cameron Carter-Vickers and Tyler Adams. Look at that substitution pattern. This is something that you should be very excited about. And we talked about it on the Soccer OG podcast with Marcelo Balboa. Greg Berhalter knows his team. He got a reaction. Even with Ferreira and Weston McKinney. And this was the best we saw Weston McKinney play in a tough spot. And he was out for a pound of flesh in that game. And I loved it. Probably could have got himself in some trouble. But he was pushing guys around, getting in their face, saying, stop chirping. Jesus Ferreira changed it. More chances came along. Haji Wright. I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with Haji Wright going to Qatar. But it depends how many center forwards you bring. You bring Ferreira, Wright, and Pepe, or is there just room for two? If there's room for three, I like those three. But Haji Wright, he, the effort's there. It's better than Jordan Pifok, who looked lost. But Haji Wright still doesn't look comfortable with that setup. And I think... Get ready for Jesus Ferreira as your starting number nine. I think that is confirmed at this point. But give Burr Halter some credit. He put in subs. We have a great bench. And we keep arguing about where do you find spots for Brendan Aronson? And can Luca Della Torre start? I like them as subs. They provide a pop. Luca Della Torre in particular, playing that ball in for Jordan Morris. We have to get these guys on board to say, hey, you may not start these games, but we're going to be a team that changes games with our substitution pattern as they change this. Those five substitutes change this game. And that is a wonderful development because not many teams have that depth. I can assure you, they're going to keep it really close to the vest. You have 17, 18 good contributors here that you feel confident about it. Tough game for Brendan Aronson, by the way, which to me also confirms that the midfield will be Adams, Tyler Adams, good. Good Tyler Adams. Adams, Musa, Musa, fantastic. Again, Adams, Musa, and Weston McKinney was the one we were worried about, right? He looks so much better. He looks so much better. There was a fire inside of him. That is going to be your midfield. I think we can build this 11. Uh, Pulisic, Wea. Ferreira, the midfield's there. Aaron Long is starting that first game in the World Cup. I want to talk about him. I thought the partnership between him and Cameron Carter-Vickers was really good. And then, <laughs> hopefully, Jedi Robinson and Serginho Dest is healthy. And then the goalkeeper. It's not going to be Ethan Horvath. You can't make that mistake. You can't make that mistake in this game. That's a mistake I, I just don't see. And you hate to judge somebody on something like that, but when... The, the margins are that tight for who plays or who goes to Qatar. That's something you just can't do because you visualize if someone does that at the World Cup. Uh, Zach Steffen had a couple mistakes, but nothing like that. That was just falling asleep. And I feel for Ethan. This was a tough spot to come into. But defensively, we were good. We were good. Uh, Matt Turner has to be the guy. Uh, Zach Steffen will get a shot. He wasn't with this camp, but you can't miss camps at this stage. That's going to push against um, Zach Steffen. The question for Horvath is he makes it as the third because Sean Johnson's coming to the picture. And I don't even want to venture a guess. And I don't think I should be dwelling too much on who's the third keeper. Uh, it's important for those two guys, obviously, but not for the big picture as we talk about success for the U.S. men's national team in Qatar. Aaron Long slander, you got to tuck it away for a little bit. Because in these four games, he's been solid. Made a few mistakes here. But this game, he hit one long ball, overcooked. Then he hit another long ball, which he hit the target to um, Jedi Robinson. And then he hit a couple more. And then all his passes were spot on. He, uh, he had one slip up, which was an offside, which could have ended badly. One bad play. And one overcooked ball. Every, every intervention he made was good. Every pass, short, midfield, and a couple long ones hit the spot. We are lucky to have Aaron Long. I know you can't believe your eyes. This is a excellent center back. Did you see the speed in his recovery? Cameron Carter's Vickers was good. Huge step up from him from his last game. 
He's on the plate at Qatar. I'd like to see Zimmerman, Long, and I think that's the pairing now. Maybe, maybe Berhalter sees something in Cameron Carter-Vickers with Long. By the way, that was a game that suited those two, but they controlled it. They controlled it. They were physical. They were smart. They didn't overthink it. Uh, good day. And then Chris Richards is the wild card. That's your four center backs. I feel good about that. Miles Robinson would love to have it, but you're getting a Miles Robinson effect from Aaron Long. You can sit here and argue with me. I watched, I watched him the whole game. I made a point of it. I was, it was really, really good. You can't, that's world-class defender right there. It is, uh, it was a bad, I mean, the field was bad. There was only 5,000 people there, but this was an uncomfortable position. This was a spot for the U.S. to find a way. And Greg Berhalter clearly approached it that way. Uh, the Nations League's important, and it should be viewed. The Nations League's been a big success, certainly in Europe. It's been good for the U.S. They won that trophy last summer in Denver, and now they're on the way. Canada and Mexico have looked awful in these early Nation League games. USA, four points out of two. That's how you get back to a semifinal in the Nations League. Had not lost to El Salvador since 1992. Historically significant, obviously. They didn't want to lose to El Salvador for the first time in, what, 30 years. So they fought. So that we're not talking about first loss in 30 years to El Salvador. This is important. Still just one win in their last 10 games in Central America, but the reaction here, much better than the performance against El Salvador to start qualifying. And that's what I was looking at, because you had those bookends where you could say, all right, this was rough. This was a group of young players that look out of their depth, and they looked, they figured things out. They, look, they were the better team before the goal. They were the better team after the goal. This should have been a win, except not for a howler of a mistake. Lots of free kicks and corner kicks. Christian Pulisic had a couple good ones, deliveries late, but with the amount that he had, that's got to be better. And it's really not his bag, set pieces. He's good at other things, but there's no one else. Yunus Musa took a couple set pieces, had that one great shot on goal. I don't know if he's a, an option. The only other guy is Kellen Acosta, and you can't put him into the 11 just for set pieces. So... That is, uh, that's an issue. So we'll see uh, where it goes from here. Um, backup fullback's a concern. Reggie Cannon had a rough one. DeAndre Yedlin wasn't great when he played. What do we do with left back reserve? Joe Scally obviously had that horror show earlier. George Bellows not even getting out there. So the verdict's out on him, it would appear. We need someone to step up. I don't know who it is, but we have... Uh, an injury prone <laughs> right back in Dest, who's not really a classic defender, which <clears throat> makes the center back pairing an even bigger responsibility. By the way, Aaron Long also played as a back three late and didn't skip a beat. That's, that's not something you just do. So fullbacks to me now, goalkeeper, it's a weird situation where we have to kind of figure it out, but I still think it's, it's Matt Turner and I feel good about that. And Zach Stevens still could be a guy that you could feel good about. Number nine's kind of cleared out with Jesus Ferreira, and we fingers crossed with Ricardo Pepe. Midfield is, is what it is. Center back, it looks like it's Aaron Long. Back up fullback. Back up fullback. Big issue. Paul Ariola, red card. He shouldn't be doing that, and it came right after a, uh, a play where it looked like he was shoved. I rewound it because these replays on this world feed for CONCACAF are just abysmal abysmal but I'm prepared for it I know you have to rewind a bit and then you catch up but there was contact and uh, the reason you know it's because Ariola beat that defender to the ball and he pushed him should have been a penalty on a handball a little bit later as well uh, the officiating uh, and it was it was a Mexican official Cesar Ramos not excellent not good I should say and the U.S. overcame that overcame a red card and two penalties not called. Doesn't that tell you something about what these guys are made of? These guys, these guys, you should be proud of that effort. And you should be, you should put your head down if you thought that they shouldn't have played that game. That's soft mentality. And I'm glad we didn't say that. Oh, oh. 
This was the right approach and they took it. You have two games left before the World Cup. How could you not approach these things at full value? I think Greg Berhalter is going to be vindicated because he approached these games like they were dress rehearsals as opposed to some other managers who put in different guys. And look, Canada was bent out of shape because of their uh, uh, situation in Honduras, banging on the referee's dressing room. U.S. figured it out. And that is really good. Great pop from the bench. I think the bench is my favorite takeaway. They, they need to get more shots on goal. Yunus Musa, fantastic. Uh, he is so consistent at this point. He is what he is. And he's got a great understudy in Luca Della Torre if anything happens. So all very good. Uh, quickly back about Ariola. Uh, can't do that. I mean, you've got to be careful. I didn't think it was a red, but you gotta, when that foot goes up, you give that referee an option to call it. There was no VAR, obviously. It was repeated many times during the broadcast. And you will have VAR. But I don't think VAR would have reversed that on Ariola. Because the referees are looking out for each other, as they should. They don't want to look bad and they'll say, well, yeah, okay, we'll stick with it. They would have not reversed that call with VAR. May have got a penalty on the handball and the push. But that's a different story. That's it, I guess. Uh, there's more to talk about it, but keep your heads up. This was good. This was a good exercise for the U.S. men's national team. Check out the Soccer OG podcast. New one out coming out Monday. I'm off on vacation going to Copenhagen or Copenhagen as it's referred to as many. I'll see you soon, refreshed and ready to go. Let's get ready for September. Oh, and congratulations to Costa Rica.